Okay, ladies, last topic. Circulatory system. This is the last one. Okay? So, uh, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit today and then we'll uh, finish it up either Monday or Tuesday. Okay? So, Angie, let's start with a question. Does everything need a circulatory system? What do you think? Angela, what's the matter? It's every every animal lead a circulatory system. Yeah. Oh, every animal. Yeah. Does a hydra have one? No. So not every animal does. Remember, the, the rule is the bigger they get, they tend to need systems. So if you're small, diffusion is good enough. But as you get bigger, we talked about the problem with getting bigger. Things have a harder time moving around because the surface area to volume ratio uh, decreases. So it's harder to fill up things. We need systems to move things around. So we're going to talk about the circuitry system, all right? Uh, we'll do, like I said, a little bit today, and then we'll continue with this next week. Try to wrap it up pretty quickly. Uh, this is a system that includes uh, three things, really. Blood, a pump, and specialized vessels. So blood, right here, a heart, and a system of blood vessels. Now, one we're going to focus on is the vertebrate closed system. So uh, we're going to talk about basically humans, but it would be the same pretty much for all mammals, okay? There is uh, a system that, it, when you think of the circulatory system, it could be open or closed. So I'm going to show you a picture. What do you think is meant by an open system? Our system is closed. So what do you think is meant by an open circulatory system? Yep. Yeah, all the blood actually is not contained in blood vessels. You can see here that there's actually, there would be blood that is not in these vessels. So in our system, in a closed system, all the blood would flow from one vessel through another vessel into another vessel, and it would always be in a blood vessel. That would be our system, okay? So a closed system is where the blood is always in a blood vessel. In an open system, the blood can actually be outside the blood vessels. This system is better at moving blood around, and we'll talk about why later on. Okay? We'll talk about why this system is better. So we're going to focus on vertebrates, uh, specifically humans. And we're going to talk about the circulatory system in humans. Let's start with blood. Three parts to the circulatory system. Blood, um, a pump, and blood vessels. So, actually, let's start with what does the circulatory system, what's its role? Pump blood. Yeah, to move around oxygen, to move around nutrients, but it's also to, uh, it also plays a role in uh, your body temperature. It plays a role in um, helping your immune system, because it actually helps to move around white blood cells. It helps also move around hormones. So it plays a role in a lot of things, not just the movement of oxygen and uh, nutrients. So let's, talk, let's start with blood. Blood is primarily composed of water, but here are the components. So plasma, on the one hand, is pretty much mostly water, but there are other things in it, other proteins, like fibrinogen for blood clotting. And on the right, you have your uh, three types of blood cells. So we have red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes, which we focused on with gas exchange because they move around uh, oxygen. Here's a picture that's black and white. But you could probably spot the red blood cells in this image. Which ones are the red blood cells? Uh, there's two red ones, though. Aha, uh -huh, you thought that was a you thought that was a dumb question, but it's actually two. These ones are also red, but these are these are the red blood cells. These are the erythrocytes. These you know what these are? Yeah, those are the platelets. 
So the platelets are the cells involved in blood clotting because if a blood vessel is broken, blood has to clot to prevent it from constantly leaking. Otherwise, you could bleed to death. Uh, the other type of, blood, of uh, cell that you see in here are these ones. These are the white blood cells. These are the ones involved in immunity. And they're also known as uh, leukocytes. So erythrocytes are your red blood cells, and leukocytes are your uh, white blood cells. Here is the blood clotting response. You may, maybe you might recognize some of these chemicals. I think, uh, sorry, some of these proteins because we actually used, I believe when you did your NCBI lab, I think we used fibrinogen as one of our protein sequences. Um, so these are the pro, you don't have to know the blood clotting response. I'm just showing you a picture of it. Okay. So this is blood clotting. Um, but I do want to point out something. Remember when we talked about digestion and what does pepsin start off as? Yeah, so you're seeing a very similar thing here. Fibrin, which is basically this thread-like substance, which helps to trap the cells from leaking out, starts off as fibrinogen. And you can see something really interesting in this picture. What do you need to activate the fibrin, you need what? Hey, look, calcium. Oh, you can't see that? Okay, sorry. Let's uh, make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. So right over here, you notice that calcium plays a role in blood clotting. Remember, you'll learn more about this in grade 12, but calcium plays a very important role in biology. It's not just in building bone. Here's a neat little picture of blood clotting. You can see those threads forming. That traps the cells so they don't constantly leak out past the damaged uh, vessel. So the system contains three things, blood, and then it contains uh, vessels. So what are your three blood vessels? Arteries, veins, and you learned about this in grade 10, right? And how do you remember the blood flow pattern? Easy. Arteries away from the heart, veins uh, are the opposite. What would this be a picture of? An artery or a vein? How do you know? I'm sorry? Very good. Walls are very thick. And I'll show you another picture, okay? A dead giveaway of an artery is a very, very uh, thick wall, okay? Then we have capillaries or capillaries, depending on how you pronounce them. And these are very thin. So this is basically what you, you see here for the thickness of the vessels. The veins are the widest, but they're not as thick as the arteries. And the capillaries are the thinnest. Because diffusion, the movement of nutrients and oxygen, is going to occur through which of these three blood vessels? Which of these three blood vessels? Right, because diffusion is very slow. So we want to go across the thinnest membrane, and that would be capillaries, right? So here you see, the idea is that the arteries, now these are called arterioles, are little arteries, but the idea is the blood should always be in blood vessels. So arteries to capillaries to veins, that's the, the flow of blood. It should be from arteries to capillaries to veins. So ACV, that's how you remember it. Then we have the heart. Now, we have a nice little picture of the heart here. So you can see in this picture the, what's this, vein. And then you can see here the artery. You can see the artery is thicker and narrower. Um, and But you can see that it's thicker because the artery is under higher pressure. So if the artery was built thinly, what, what do you think could happen? Yeah, very good. It could burst under all that pressure. So we did a whole unit evolution. So we have what's called a four-chambered heart. What do you think the first heart would have looked like? A single-chambered heart. And then eventually a double-chambered heart. And then eventually a triple-chambered heart. So fish have a double-chambered heart. So the two chambers would be right here. There's one chamber right here, the atria, and then 
The other chamber is called a ventricle. So insects would have like a one-chambered heart. But here's the question. A any heart is better than no heart because remember diffusion is really, really slow. So let me ask you a question. Imagine I take a bottle of water and I, and I drop food coloring into it. Yeah, you guys have all seen that happen, right? The food coloring will what? Will spread out? How, how can I make that happen more quickly? Shake the bottle. And that's what a heart does. Shakes the things around so that things will move more quickly. So even if you only have a single chambered heart, any heart is better than no heart. So the first heart would have just been a simple pump, one chamber that moves fluid around. But you'll see our heart, the four chamber heart, is much more organized. Uh, it's an, it's a, basically an enhanced version of the original heart. The fish have a double chambered heart. Amphibians have a triple chambered heart. You can see here. Here's one chamber. Here's two chambers. Here's the third chamber. And then we have, uh, Birds and mammals that have a four-chambered heart. One, two, three, four. And that's the one that we're going to focus on, which is the human heart, the four-chambered heart. And you can see a nice image right here. We will talk about the advantage of the four over the three and the three over the two and the two over the one. But we'll talk about that on Monday, okay? So this is the one that we're going to look at, the four-chamber heart. So here are the chambers. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four. Now, this is full of, like, some sort of a die, so it really wouldn't look like this. And, by the way, you're looking at the heart. So this, you're looking at it from your perspective. This is actually the right side on this which is the, your left side, and this is the uh, left side of the heart. Okay? Angeline. This, this is the tissue around the heart. This is in the body, in a cadaver. Okay? I have a yeah. Um, on the example, can you put it in the cadaver? Yeah, let's say. Are you going to put it on, are you going to actually like put the left side on the right side, or are you actually going to put the right side on the right side? Just ask me, what's the perspective? And I would say it's from the in perspective of the individual. Okay. So not you looking at it. It's from, imagine this was you. Imagine this was your heart. Well, this would be your left side, and that would be your right side. Oh, really, eh? Just ask the teacher. Hopefully they'll tell you. So here's a diagram of the heart, so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so here are the four chambers. One, two... Three, four. So, did you guys study a, a little bit of the heart rate time? Okay, so I'm going to ask you some trivia questions then. What do we call the structures that prevent the flow of blood from going backwards? Valve. Okay, valves. So, I'm going to ask you a question. What would they be similar to in your digestive system? Very, Very good. So, you may on your exam get a question, compare valves to sphincters. How are they similar? Only allow things to go one way. Yeah, very good. They allow for the movement of things to just go one way. And that's good because you want... Now think about this. It's called the circulatory system. When you think of a circulatory system, what shape comes a circle? So you want things to travel in a particular direction to go in a circle. You don't want the blood going backwards. Okay, I'll ask you another question. What's the role of this structure called the septum? Very good. It separates the oxygen rich from the oxygen poor. Okay. So, what would you see if you were a doctor and you had a baby who was born with a hole in the septal wall, a septal defect? But before you fixed it, what would be a sign or symptom that you would notice? Heart beating on the body. Well, first you would see a baby. You don't see someone's heart unless the heart is on the outside. Yeah, so you, very good. You might notice that the uh, skin color might be um, like a, kind of like a bluish color. 
Uh, what else would you notice? Very good. What else? What about the activity level of the child? Yeah, very, very tired, very lethargic, maybe not as energetic. Let me ask you a question. What if the hole wasn't in the heart? Where could there be a hole? In your head. Thank you. Where could there be a hole that would have the same effect between two things? Did I lose you? So there's a hole. Do you? I'm assuming it was repaired. Was it repaired? So it must be very, very tiny then. Yeah. So imagine, imagine a hole in this location. Right here. Right here. You'll notice these two vessels are right beside each other. So when they when they're developing, some very rare, but it can happen where there's a a breach between one side, which is the artery, and the other side, which is the uh, vein. So the aorta and the pulmonary artery, not a vein. So you can see that. Sorry, I'm getting all these messages on my laptop. So. You see the left pulmonary artery and the aorta? What color is the left pulmonary artery in this diagram? So it's it's indicating that it's oxygen poor, right? Whereas the aorta is oxygen rich. So a hole here would be very similar to a hole in your septum. It would have very similar symptoms because you're still mixing that oxygen poor and oxygen rich blood. Okay, I think what I want to do is just really, really quickly, just see if you guys remember your blood flow pattern. So we don't have to look at it on um, Monday. Plus my battery is running really low. I left my adapter at home. Yeah. So hold on. We're, we're just getting there. Okay. So let's see if you remember your blood flow pattern. Okay, so let's pick a point. Let's say we're starting uh, here in the right atrium, okay? Right atrium. Why? Don't worry about that. Okay, so your blood flow pattern is what? Right atrium. So this is your right atrium. To what? Right ventricle. And then what? And then, actually, let me, let me come out of this. Because you can't see my pen, can you? When I'm in that mode, you can't see the pen. Okay, so change the color. Okay, so remember the blood flow pattern is right atrium to right ventricle. Okay, what's the name of this valve? Well, oh, the tri or I just call it the AV valve, the atrioventricular valve, because because this is an atria and this is a ventricle. So remember that uh, the chambers are on top are called atria. One is called an atrium, and the ones in the bottom are called the ventricles. And then from the right ventricle, where does it go? Pulmonary artery. Remember artery away from the blood. Uh, sorry, away from the heart, and then to the to the lungs. And what does it do with the lungs? Picks up oxygen and dumps off CO2. So it comes back to the pulmonary vein, which is oxygen rich. By the way, it's the only vein that's oxygen rich. All other veins should be oxygen poor because they're always being, bringing blood back to the heart to move it around your body, right? It's the only vein that's oxygen rich. Then it goes to the left atrium. So we're in this chamber, left ventricle, and then through the biggest artery in the body, which is the aorta. Then either it's going to go up to your brain or down to your body. And what's the name of the vein that brings the blood back? 
or inferior vena cava, right? So that's that's your circulatory system. There are three types of circulation here. There's pulmon, pulmonary, uh, sorry, pulmonary circulation, which involves the right side of the heart to the lungs, back to the left side. Then there's systemic, which is basically everywhere else. And then there's one last one, which is the cardiac cycle. Guess what that is? That's just your heart. Because if you look, what do you notice about the heart? It has all these blood vessels because the heart itself has to feed itself too with blood. So if you get someone who has who needs bypass surgery, what do you think that means? So that means that one of these vessels is blocked, so they would have to go around it. If it's double bypass, they gotta go around too. Quadruple, there are four that are blocked. Yeah, sir, my aunt has one to bypass. Yeah, so that means four vessels would have been blocked. Okay, ladies, why don't we stop there? And I'm gonna show you a really cool 1962 video clip of a frog that's being dissected. Okay? okay. You know, I couldn't deal with the right <laughs> <laughs> Sir, oh my god.